I'm starting a review series on the Specialized Stump Jumper. So I just picked this up. And what I do for my long-term reviews is I will buy the bike with my own money. And it's been over two years since I've been able to do this. So I'm really excited about being able to return to kind of how I built my YouTube channel. So what I typically do is I'll do a, what I call a first look. And that is where I go over the build. I talk about the components, the things that I like just on paper before I've even gotten the bike on the trail. And then I proceed to a first ride and then a review, a midterm, a long-term review. So this is really the first video. This is the expert build model. And like I said, I'll show the components and you know, you can see these online, right? But it's kind of cool to see them in the flesh and, uh, or at least on a video <laughs> and just talk through uh, the different uh, components and everything like that. So let's get into it. So this is the expert build model below the Pro and two steps below the S-Works. Uh, this one retails for about $6,000. Bikes are getting expensive, and this one is proof of that, but it's got a great build. So let's talk about the build, then I'll talk about the geometry numbers. And the first thing that I gotta mention is the paint color. I totally dig this paint color. I've never had a, a, a white or kind of off-white, I don't know the official name that Specialized calls it, but really cool paint color, and I really like kind of glossy finishes on carbon frames. So of course this is a carbon frame. So it comes with a Fox 34 140 mil travel fork. And at the end of this video, I'll talk about what I think of the travel and kind of how I intend to use this bike. So 34, you know, pretty appropriate for a fork with 140. Would I like to seen a 36? Maybe, but it does keep the weight of the bike down. And because it's only 140 millimeters of travel versus like 150 or 160, uh, I think the 34 millimeter stanchion tubes is a good choice. And by the way, 34 is just how thick the stanchion tube. So the thicker the tubes, the heavier the fork, but the stiffer the fork, uh, which you really need once you get, get up into more travel. Looking at the shock, uh, you've got a Fox Evol shock. It's got three positions on the knob. I haven't even gotten the suspension set up yet. I just built it up last night. And so um, this is a, a shock that has, you know, it's got the, the middle level where you can adjust uh, the different levels of pedaling platform, one, two, and three with the blue knob. And then you can lock it out. You can go to fully open. And what I typically do on these kind of shocks is I'll run it in the middle setting when I'm pedaling. And then when I'm going downhill, I will just open it up fully. So I'll talk about how it feels once I get it out on the trail. Moving over to the drivetrain, it's got a SRAM Eagle drivetrain. So the rear cassette is a 10 to a 52. So huge range, typical of SRAM Eagle and a 30 tooth front chain ring. It's got a SRAM XO rear derailleur. So this is the S3 size and that's roughly a medium. And most of the sizes, they put 170 crank arms, which I'm really happy about. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I talk about the geometry. So it's got a fairly low bottom bracket. And I really like the fact that they put a 170, not a 175. So you've heard me really brag about how much I love my transition spur, which has a low bottom bracket as well, but that has 175s and I get a lot of pedal strikes. So uh, again, really happy that uh, this bike has 170, so it will reduce those pedal strikes. The shifter is a SRAM XO as well, of course, 12 speed. Moving on to the brakes, it's got SRAM G2 brakes. I have these brakes on my transition spur, and I love these brakes. They've got really nice modulation, really good power. It's a four piston brake, so I love the feel of these brakes. Uh, they're the RSC, so they've got adjustments like the lever reach which I like because I don't have very long fingers. So I like moving the lever closer to the bar with this knob here. And then you've got this dial, which allows you to adjust the position of the contact. So how quickly the lever makes contact for the brakes to touch the rotor. So uh, really good brakes. Specialized put a 200 millimeter rotor on the front and a 180 rotor on the back. Very appropriate for a bike like this. So this is kind of a mid to long travel trail bike. Uh, so. Really good spec for the brakes. Moving on to the cockpit, starting off with the handlebar. So it's got a specialized alloy bar. It's 780, which is appropriate. I run an 800 on my transition spur, but honestly, that's probably a bit too wide. Probably need to cut that down to 780. I have 
an 800 on my Enduro bike, which is very appropriate. And I feel like 780 is good for trail. I run 760 on my cross country bike. Now, this is the one component where I kind of wish Specialized would have gone with carbon uh, because for this price range, I just think it should have come with a carbon handlebar, not an alloy bar. I love carbon bars. I love the stiffness of it, the, the feel of it, but it's probably not gonna be a big deal. It's just a matter of personal preference. It does come with Deity grips though. So that's a really good spec. Uh, these are great grips. Uh, I personally have not used these much. Uh, my son loves them for some of his bikes. Uh, he rides more slope style, but uh, he loves these grips. So I'm glad they put some really nice Deity lock-on grips on this bike. Also glad they went with a one-up dropper post. I've used several one-up dropper posts in the past and they are very smooth. I kind of like the fact that Specialized didn't try to put on their house brand dropper post. You know, I get it when bike companies make their own components and things like that, but when you've got dropper posts like 1UP that are just proven, they work so well, they're smooth, I'm glad they went with this 1UP. Now it does have a Specialized saddle, which I've used Specialized saddles in the past and they are very comfortable. I can just tell by, again, I have not ridden this around the, uh, you know, on the trails yet, just around the parking lot, so to speak the driveway actually and very comfortable saddle so far so when i do my full review on this bike i'll report back on the comfort of the saddle and then the stem is just a basic house brand alloy stem 35 millimeter length which is very appropriate for a bike like this moving on to the wheels so looking at the rims it's got specialized traverse rims these are alloy do i wish they were carbon eh, i'm kind of neutral on it honestly you know, it used to be bikes in this price range would always come with carbon. Carbon has to be built right to ride well. Uh, carbon rims, can, they're, they're stiff, right? They're, they handle really well, but if they're not built right, they can feel like riding on boards, you know, really stiff and not a compliant ride. So alloy rims, you know, I, I have them on my current other trail bike, the Transition Spur, and also my Transition Sentinel Enduro bike or all mountain bike, however you want to classify it. Uh, so I've gotten used to the alloy rims. They have a nice feel. I mean, they, they, they damp the trail better than carbon. Uh, again, unless carbon's built really compliant. So, um, you know, I'm neutral on it. I, I think I like these rims. Uh, now tires, I've been running Maxxis tires for quite a while, like two or three years or more. So I've not tried these tires yet. So it's got the butcher in the front and then the purgatory in the back really good looking tread pattern. Like I, I feel like these are, are going to be really good tires. They are tubeless. This bike comes with tubes, but Specialized does include valve stems. So it's easy to convert these wheels to tubeless. Of course, this is a 29er. I mean, I didn't mention that, but almost every trail bike made today is a 29er. It's just the way it is. I kind of like that now. I used to be a 27.5 guy. Uh, I've moved on to 29 and gotten so used to them. I like it. All right, now let's move on to the frame. Oh, one thing I will mention too, I didn't mention this when I talked about the drivetrain, but it does come with a chain keeper. Probably not necessary. I've not run them on any of my other bikes, but this does come with one. So just a little extra security there to make sure you don't drop a chain on a rough and chunky downhill. Okay, the frame, work of art. <laughs> this, this is just a good looking bike. It's a good looking frame. So like I mentioned before, it is carbon. It does come with specialized chain stay protector that's got the ridges to keep the chain silent. It does come with a SWAT box. I've mentioned this before when I had a specialized in my fleet, how much I take advantage and really enjoy the SWAT box. It's so nice to head out on short rides, not have to carry any tools with you, just put everything on the bike. So it's got the integrated Allen, Allen set there on the bottom. I've got the tube inside and you can put a pump in there, put you know, your nutrition, some bars. So again, nice to head out on a short ride, just throw in a water bottle and you're good to go. You don't have to carry anything on your jersey or in a hydration pack or anything like that. This bike has fully internal cable routing. And yes, I've got to try to fix that. It's kind of twisted. I just built this bike up last night. So you can see there are no cables externally on the frame. I mean, you do have the rear brake cable popping out there and going back inside the chain stay coming back out by the rear brake. Uh, really makes the bike look clean, keeps the cables from rattling around. You do have a down tube protector. So not only a rubber down tube protector by the bottom bracket, but Specialized also includes a clear strip that you probably can't see in the video, but 
just some tape, some frame saver tape that's underneath the down tube. The frame is also this asymmetrical design with this piece over here to improve the stiffness. I did go with the S3, which for my height uh, looked good. I compared the top tube of my current trail bike to the top tube of the S3, and that's why I went with it. I'm 5'8", a little over 5'8", and so this bike should fit me really well. It's felt good so far, just pedaling around the driveway when I was getting it set up, but I'll report back on my review of how the size feels. One thing that I like about this bike that I liked about the other stump jumper that I had a few years ago is the flip chip. So you can change the geometry. And I was surprised when I had that other one how much of a difference that made. So I believe this one comes in the low position. I'll probably put it in the high position for my local trails and then when I head up to the mountains, put it in the low position. And like I said, it, it makes a pretty big difference. It goes from a bike that feels a little sluggish on tight trails to when you put it in the high position, making it feel more agile. But uh, you know, coming down a mountain, you want it in the low position. Uh, the faster you go, the more you want that bottom bracket to drop. So that's a good segue into talking about the geometry. So I'm not gonna mention all the numbers, but let's mention some of the highlights of this bike. The four main geo numbers that I look at when looking at a bike is the head tube angle, the seat tube angle, the bottom bracket height, and then the wheelbase. So let's start with the head tube angle. So this bike has a 65 degree head angle in the low position and a 65.5 in the high position, which is very appropriate. So the way bikes are shaking out today is cross country bikes are usually around 68 degree head angle. Trail bikes eh, around 66 to 68. And then enduro bikes or all mountain bikes going more towards that 63 to 64 degree head angle. So at 65, I feel like this is going to be a very stable, but fairly agile bike. So my transition Sentinel is a 63, or a 63 and a half, I believe. And then my transition Spur is a 66. So this bike is going to kind of fall between those, which I'm really excited about because, you know, I want a bike that's going to feel agile that's also going to be very stable, very planted. Um, and so the bottom bracket height is also a number uh, to me that's really important for how a bike feels on a downhill. In the low position, the bottom bracket height is 333 millimeters. Just for reference, my transition spur is 335, so about the same. And then when you put the flip chip in the high position, it raises the bottom bracket by seven millimeters to make it 340. Now, I love the way a bike with a low bottom bracket feels on a downhill. It makes it feel like you're in the bike, that the, the handling is so nice with a low bottom bracket. However, I hate pedal strikes, and so there's a trade-off, but that's why I mentioned earlier that I appreciate that Specialized went with a 170 crank arm. So you kind of get the best of both worlds, right? You get a bike with less pedal strikes, but that just confidence-inspiring feeling when you're descending with a low bottom bracket. This bike has a fairly steep seat tube angle, which is common for bikes today. So it's 76 in the low position and 76.5 in the high position. And that steeper seat tube angle is just gonna make the bike feel a little bit more planted when you're climbing steep terrain. So it just puts your weight more forward. And then of course, when you're descending, you're out of the saddle. So you don't really need uh, a steep seat tube angle. But again, it really helps when you're climbing now, pedaling around, I, I don't mind steep seat tube angles on 29ers. Um, what I found is steep seat tube angles on 27.5, I felt like my weight was too far forward. So I, I believe I'm gonna like this on my local trails, which require a lot more pedaling versus you know just steep climbing and steep descending that I'll do on other trails. But locally, I'll report back how that steep seat tube angle feels. And then the wheelbase is 1200 millimeters, and that's pretty, common. Uh, my transition spur is 1190, but that has a shorter fork. It's not like crazy long, so it sh should still feel agile, but it's long enough so that the bike has some stability on the downhills. One more geometry number that I sometimes look at is the length of the chainstay. So this particular bike has 432 millimeter chainstays. Again, for reference, the transition spur has uh, 435. So I like short chainstays. It makes the bike feel really playful, especially on tighter trails. So again, you know, all these geo numbers look good to me, right? On paper, I mean, this bike looks like it's gonna be a ton of fun to ride. And 
Uh, I'm really excited about getting some miles on it and reporting back to all of you on how it feels. Uh, and again, I'll mention that in my next uh, review. Now we're gonna see what this bike weighs, which I'm really curious about. Before I do that, I do wanna thank my local bike shop who made this bike possible for me. Super cool bike shop, they're an authorized specialized dealer. So if you're in the Gainesville, Florida area, check them out. So we're at 29.67 pounds. I could probably drop quite a bit of weight off this bike if I wanted to go with another wheel set. Maybe some smaller tires, but these tires look really good. I think there's a pretty good spec as far as tires. So yeah, 29.67, so we are under 30. So that's my first look at the Specialized Stump Jumper Expert build. As you can tell, I'm pretty stoked about this bike. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, on paper, this looks like a super fun bike to ride. So check out my channel for upcoming videos on this bike. Thanks for watching.